open your mind. Hey out there, this is Buzz with the Survival Buzz. Hope everybody's been doing good out there, enjoying some of this nice weather we've been having. So I haven't been making a lot of videos. Um, last summer, I didn't my main garden area, I didn't uh, get fixed up, didn't get it going. So it's been kind of overgrown the last couple of years worth of growth. I had some crazy weeds in there that are dried out and taller than I am. So I spent several hours the other day cleaning that up. So pardon me for not being on here making videos, but I've been trying to enjoy some of this weather and get some things done around uh, the house, get prepared for all the heat coming. So, you know, whether you're, you're a religious person or not, whether you believe in God, I think everybody sees right now how crazy and upside down the world is. Whether you want to call it for what it is, evil, sinful, or if you want to give one of these new age type names, crazy, you know, insane clown world, whatever you want to call it. I think we all can see that the world is completely upside down at this point. And it seems like there's no end in sight, really. It just gets crazier day on, day in, day out. So, But I heard this uh, broadcast the other day that I'd never heard before. And perhaps some of you on here that are a little bit older than I am have probably heard it and already know about it. Um, but I found it rather interesting for the time. Um, it was a broadcast by a radio broadcaster, Paul Harvey, back in 1965. He was a broadcaster for ABC Radio, and um, I found it rather interesting. So I'm going to read this to you guys, and let me know what you think. Is, is this the world we're living in right now? Because it sure seems like to me. So here goes, Paul Harvey, 1965. If I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness and I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the. So I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that Man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that that's what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old I would teach to pray after me, our father, which in, in art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families that war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves, until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames the entire time. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions. Just let those run wild until, before you knew it, we'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon, I could evict God from the courthouse, then the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. In his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and defy science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I, I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremities and hard work and patriotism and moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public and I could lure you into bed with the diseases for which there is no cure. 
In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. Paul Harvey, 1965. I don't know if you guys find this as interesting as me, but for something wrote way back then to be so true today, to be the world we're living in is the one that he describes as coming. You know, no matter how you feel about God, how you feel about the creator, how you feel about Jesus, all the preps in the world aren't going to change what's coming for us people. And I'm probably going to lose some subscribers over this, but I don't really care. This is how I feel. And I got on here to sp speak my mind and tell you all how I feel. And the preps aren't enough. You know, bracing for everything that's coming is important. But at the end of the day, all of this has been laid out in front of us since the beginning of time. And it's slowly, slowly picking up pace to the point we're at now. And if that, that little broadcast didn't strike something in you, then maybe you're looking at the world through a different lens than I am. It's not too late. It's not too late to change. It's not too late to ask for forgiveness. Because if you think things are deceiving now, you haven't seen nothing yet. You have not seen upside down world yet. This is tame compared to what we're going to be put through over the course of time. And if you're not concrete in your faith, if you're not working toward that, at least it's going to get harder and harder to tell the good from the bad. It already is like that broadcast said, you know, the evil is good and the good is square a little bit old terminology there, but you get where I'm going with it. We've got to make a change people. And we've got to band together and stick together through these rough times ahead. God bless y'all. And I'll catch you on the flip side later.